So this video is all about creating loopable scene animations right here inside of After Effects. So we've done a handful of tutorials on creating vector type animations, but this one's all about creating an endless scene that can go on for minutes, even hours long. So aside from just loopable animations, I'm gonna show you how to put together a really cool ambient scene animation with a handful of different techniques. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Welcome to our channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So we're gonna get started. And if you wanna follow along with our tutorial, you can download our project files for free. I'll link them below. So let's jump in and let's get started. All right, so here we are, and this is what we'll be creating here in After Effects. And I already have our scene set up from Adobe Illustrator. If you wanna learn how this process works, how you can get any scene that you want for free, any type of vector graphics and set it up in Adobe Illustrator and then bring it over to After Effects. I will link a tutorial on this process. It's a very quick video, but I've done this so many times on our channel that I don't want to keep showing this process. So if you're new to this process, go ahead and check our links below and you can learn how to import these files into After Effects separated so we can do great animation. So the first technique is being able to animate objects using the Puppet Pin tool. So for here, I have all my tree layers isolated. So what I can do is select one of these trees here, come here to the top and grab the Puppet Pin tool. And every object is gonna be different, but once you get familiarized with how this tool works, you can understand how to animate things. So for example, I'm gonna click a pin out here at the top because I wanna animate the top of the trees. But I also need to lock the tree in position, so I'm gonna do like three more points here at the bottom. All right, so now we have four points on this tree. Every object is just gonna depend on what it is and what you're trying to do with, it, with this animation. So. I'll hit U on my keyboard and we'll see that we have our pins here with our keyframes. And what I'm going to do here is grab the top point and just move it over to here to the left and that's going to move the tree from the top. Then I can move forward in our timeline by say two seconds and I can just move this over to animate to the other direction. So now what's going to happen is you're going to get this very subtle animation. And our goal here is to have the trees blowing with the wind, cr creating just some physics. And we want to keep this animation endless. So instead of just copying the keyframes, what I'm going to do is take one of our new expressions that I've been using a lot. I'm going to alt the stopwatch for our position. And I'm going to type in loop out, capital O. And then I'm going to type in uh, open parenthesis, quotation, and type in uh, ping pongs right there. So your expression should look just like this. Put that in there. And I'll select both these keyframes, hit F9 to make them easy, easy keyframes. So now what's going to happen is that this tree is going to animate forever. And so this will allow us to create a very loopable animation. So this will extend on for however long you need your composition to be. So that's how we'll be doing this tree animation. So then you just apply this concept to the rest of the objects that you have in your scene. So this next technique might be specific to this tutorial, but we need to create as much natural movement as possible what makes sense and in this case we're going to animate the sky right here we have our moon layer and we also have our stars and i'm gonna take my background layer here which is just all this all right and since i didn't cut out the sky from the rest of the image what i'm gonna do is come here to the top and grab the pen tool and i'm just gonna mask out our sky and which is really easy to do with this image but you can separate it in illustrator uh, and do this much more efficiently as here in After Effects. Okay, so what I'm gonna do after we have our mask cut out here, I'm gonna go ahead and take our objects and duplicate it. And, and I'll take our top layer and put it above all of our sky assets, so the stars, the moon, and I'll be on top. Then I'm gonna come here to our bottom layer, hit MR keyboard for mask one and set this to subtract. And this will just be our sky. And that's completely separated. So now then what I can do is go up to layer, new, null object. And I can take all of our star layers and parent it to the null object and hit R on my keyboard for rotation, add a keyframe for it. And I'll move forward, say maybe 20 seconds and set our rotation to say negative one X. So what's gonna happen is our sky will be animating like that, rotating around the night sky. And I think that's fine. And for this, we're gonna all stopwatch and type in loop out again. And we're just gonna do open parenthesis and close parenthesis just like this. So this will continue the animation on forever and it won't ping pong so that's fine but i want to animate the moon as well but we need to do something a little different with this one so so we'll go ahead and create another null object by going to layer new null object and we will parent the moon layer to that null and i'll take our moon layer and i'll just kind of hide it underneath the mountains like so and we'll hit go to our null object hit r on keyboard for rotation we'll add a keyframe for it and you know we can move forward in time and then rotate this null object to go below the other side of the mountain, just like so. So now we'll just get this very simple animation. What we're gonna do here is I'll click the stopwatch for rotation 
and we're going to do the same exact thing. We'll type in loop out and we'll do the open close parenthesis and make sure it looks just like this. So what's going to happen is that the moon's going to animate in the night sky like so, and then it's just going to pop up on the other side. So kind of a little bit of suspension disbelief how that's going to work, but I think it's fine because we're trying to loop the animation. So that's how you can animate, say, like a sky animation like this. You can always use position keyframes instead of rotation if you're working with, say, a daytime scene. And before we move on to our next technique, I want to give a huge shout out to our 100 title pack extension right here in After Effects. So this is our title pack extension right here instead of After Effects where you can preview every title template before you apply what you're looking for. So when you find a title you want, you click on apply. And with a click of a button, you'll have a full title animation imported into your timeline which you can go into that composition and easily change out your titles. And with a click of a button, you can hide certain titles that you don't need and it won't affect the animation whatsoever. It'll keep it exactly the same. You can easily change the colors of your titles with a click of a button as well. And you're able to change other parameters as needed. And by using an accent motion graphics from our motion graphics starter pack, you can take your work to the next level by a few clicks as well. So if you're looking to produce awesome work and save a tremendous amount of time, I will link our templates below. If you do pick up anything off our website, you will be supporting our channel. So thank you very much. So for our third ambient environment technique is being able to use turbulent displays for other types of elements. So for example, I have this smoke coming out of the chimney here. I want to be able to just animate that. Uh, continuously so I have my house layer here selected I'm just gonna come here and grab the pen tool and just deselect the smoke from the house like so and I'll go ahead and duplicate our house layer and set the mass path to subtract on one of them so then here I just have the smoke what we'll do is go to effect distort and we're gonna grab turbulent displace and with turbulent displace applied I'm gonna set displacement to turbulent smoother I can bring down the amount to like 25 ish and I'll bring down the size because we want to have a very minimal effect here. So I'll just bring this down. And then I'm going to all click the stopwatch for evolution. And we're going to type in time asterisk 300. So then this will be animating on forever. So now, so far, now we have this smoke just kind of wiggling in there. Um, and it looks like it's animating. So we're bringing more animation properties. So turbulence displace is a good effect if you need to just apply some very fluid animation to one specific object. So for our fourth technique is going to be talking about lighting. So here we already have some built in lighting from this house that we can manipulate, but also I'm talking about the overall scene as well. So let's talk about the house real quick. What I can do very simply because these are all in the same pixel group, I'll go to effect color correction and I can do uh, change to color, which I don't think I've ever used this effect in a tutorial before. So that's awesome. I'm going to grab the from eyedropper and select the current color that that's already there. and I'll come here to two, select the previous color, and then I'll just kind of make this darker. And I'll set this to hue, lightness, and saturation. That way I know it will uh, be affected. And simply all we have to do is add a keyframe from two, move forward in time, and then select that original color. So now what's gonna happen is that's gonna do that. And then as before, we'll hit U on keyboard, bring our keyframes, all click the stopwatch, and we'll do the loop out again, but this time we will use uh, ping pong. So now the lighting will be changing throughout the scene and now we have a actual object that has lighting in it that's animated. But for the overall scene, I like to go up to layer, new adjustment layer and come here to effect, color correction and we'll do a brightness and contrast and we'll go ahead and add a keyframe for brightness and we can move forward in time by a little bit and bring down the brightness of the scene or raise it up depending on what you want to do. And we'll hit U, bring up keyframes and we'll do the same exact uh, loop out expression that we just used just like that ping pong so now the lighting of the scene will be changing very subtly but it just adds more to the overall composition very nicely so that's a really cool touch of what we're doing and then let's go to effect noise and grain and let's just add a little bit of noise to this so it's not all static so maybe I'll do like a seven percent and uncheck use color noise maybe we'll actually do like a four percent yeah so just so just add a little bit more animation to our overall image Okay, so for our last technique, we're going to create some just very subtle movements. So I'll go up to layer, new, null object, and we could call this camera if you want. And I'm going to select all of our layers that are not parented to a null object already. So I'll select all those and I'll parent it to the null or to the camera object that we just created. Hit asterisk keyboard for scale at the beginning of our timeline. We'll add a keyframe for it. And, you know, maybe we do like a five second push in so we can move it in by a little bit. Actually, we'll go ahead and extend that a little bit more if you want. But, you know, we'll be scaling in and then we'll have it scale out. So we'll click the stopwatch and we'll do the loop out again. And make sure it's like just like that. And if you want, you can make both keyframes easy. Easy keyframes by hitting F9 on your keyboard. 
So now it's going to be scaling in and out for however long you need to do, which is a very nice uh, animation. Obviously, you can't just keep scaling in forever because then you just be scaling in on, you know, a pixel. But, you know, by repeating the animation, this will create a very nice smooth movement to our comp. So that is our tutorial on creating these loopable scene animations right here inside Adobe After Effects. I hope you found this tutorial insightful and fun to follow along with. And hopefully you picked up a handful of cool techniques that you can use in your future projects. So be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are below and always be creative.